aniline because of the NH2 group. Chloro is the substituent, and you're right, this is in the meta position. So M chloro aniline. That's fine. How about if we were going to use numbers? How would we name this? Three chloro aniline. That's right. I often make a mistake and think of this as the number two, but the numbering starts over here. So that would be one, two, three. So we could also call this three chloro aniline. So those would both be acceptable. Good. Let's try another example. Now, we already learned what the common name is for this type of functional group on benzene. So first, we'll have to look that up again. Did you find what type of, what would be the name? What name is that? Uh, benzoic acid. That's right. A carboxylic acid on benzene is called benzoic acid. And I don't know if we've ever talked about what the name for this substituent is. What you encountered what the name of this substituent is. This is not an amine. Uh, uh, I got O-nitrobenzoic acid. Looks like you have seen that name. Good. Is that nitro? Yeah, you're okay. right. Or 2-nitrobenzoic acid. Absolutely. 2-nitrobenzoic acid would also be correct. Because, by definition, this is the number one carbon here. So we don't have to give indication, since it's symmetrical, we don't have to give indication on which, like... Uh, whether it's over here yeah, or over here? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Because um, whether it's on the right-hand or the left-hand ortho just depends on what direction you're looking at it from. Um, after all, if we just took this molecule and flipped it, the nitro would be on the left-hand. Okay. So um, it would be the same molecule either way. These positions really are equivalent to each other in this molecule. And it's good that you picked up the idea that this is a nitro substituent. It turns out that the nitro group is really important for benzene. So we need to know the name of this substituent. This is nitro. And, and, and how is that? Uh, you mentioned on one of your videos drawn out what ah, uh, the point. structure of the Sure. It turns out that it is important to know the structure of the nitro group. This is something we should be able to figure out by counting the valence electrons, but you wouldn't really want to have to spend the time to do that on the test. The structure is a little surprising. You can see that the nitrogen has four bonds. Well, a neutral nitrogen would have three bonds, so this has to have a formal charge. And a neutral oxygen would have two bonds, and this oxygen only has one bond, so it has a negative charge. Overall, the nitro is still neutral, so this is an unusual structure. There's no way to get rid of these charges, but overall the nitro is still neutral. Okay. But it does turn out to be important that the nitrogen has a positive charge, and therefore the nitrogen has no lone pairs, because it's got four bonds, so it's got no lone pairs. So this is why it's so important not to confuse a nitro group with an amine substituent. They have very different behavior. So the key thing to know about nitro is that it doesn't have lone pairs, and the nitrogen does have a positive charge. Yeah, so we should really just memorize this Lewis structure for nitro, because it turns out that nitro is now a very important substituent for benzene reactions. And its prefix is just nitro. It would be possible to give a IUPAC name for this, but it turns out that this is another compound that simply has a common name from history. This just has another common name. Previously, we only learned about common names for single substituents, but there's actually a common name for two methyl substituents. What do we call a benzene with a single methyl substituent? Uh, toluene? Yeah, toluene. Toluene. Uh, a, a little hard to pronounce. A benzene with a single methyl substituent is called toluene. Well, it turns out that there's just a special name for a benzene with two methyl substituents, that, which is called xylene. If I'm pronouncing that right, xylene, xylene. Now you could use this for any benzene with two methyls. So this would also be xylene. So we need to have some kind of locator to indicate the difference between these. Well, we can use O, M, and P again. So which one would this be? So this would be M-xylene, and this would have been O-xylene. This would have been O-xylene. And so we, um, 
and that's all the name we need okay. because xylene by definition tells us that there's two different methyl substituents mm -hmm. so we don't need to say let's say anything we don't we certainly would not want to say methyl xylene or anything like this xylene already means that there's two methyl substituents there so if you have a benzene with a single methyl substituent you can call it toluene and if you have a benzene with two methyl substituents you call it xylene and you use o m or p to say what the position between them is and that's used uh, oftentimes instead of the IUPAC system. Your instructor didn't even bother going over the IUPAC name for this. We won't either. We'll just call this silent. So this is the only example of a common name that we've seen where the common name refers to both of the to two substitutions. All right. Obviously, uh, the key thing to do uh, after uh, going through all these is just to make a bunch of flashcards here. Now, there are no common names applicable here, so we can just use standard IUPAC approach. So let's try to use a standard IUPAC approach to name this. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you just read what, what did you have written down here? I have, um, I think I should probably treat this as the Yeah, that is better. So I said that you uh, started out correct, but actually it would be better. Why is it better? Why is it better to treat this as the number one carbon and not this? Because the, the it's attached to something of because it's attached to a chlorine. Okay, we'll talk about more that that more in a second. Let's just go ahead and finish off the name. You're basically on the right track. I don't, I, would I have to give indication then of the locator of the, uh, the chloro then? Uh, let's see. Maybe in, uh, it, it would be best to put that in, yeah. I got uh, one chloro four ethyl benzene or one chloro p ethyl benzene. Okay. Now, neither of these substituents has a common name as associated with it for benzene. So we're just using the standard IUPAC suffix for this, which is benzene. Then we have to decide whether to start the numbering up here or over here. Mm -hmm. Now, both of these are going to get prefixes. So how do you decide which one is better? Well, at this point, we just use alphabetical order. Whichever comes first in alphabetical order should get the lower number here. Well, this is, starts with a C, chloro, and this starts with an E for ethyl. So that's the reason why it's better to give this the number one. Uh, if there's no other reason, if there's no other reason to start the numbering in one place rather than another, you can use alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you don't use alphabetical order because there's a different reason for the numbering. But if there's nothing else to choose between, you can use the alphabetical ordering. So we could call this 1-chloro-4-ethylbenzene. Or, let's see, uh, we could say these are in a para position, and we could say it's P. Chloro, ethyl, okay. benzene. Notice that once you say P, mm -hmm. you don't need any more locators because P me P tells you the location of both of the substituents, mm -hmm. right? So I think um, you were putting in a second locator here for the ethyl group, um, but when you say P, that's all the locators you need. Okay. P chloro ethyl benzene. If we say numbers, we need a separate number for each substituent, and I suppose in some sense. 
you don't really need the one here because the reader should be able to figure out that the coin is on the number one carbon. But in this case, it, you really should make life easier and put this locator in. So everyone would put, so it's really best to put in both of these numbers over here. It's not like chlorines always get the number one substituent. So this is the good name. So uh, let's see. Um, one thing we went over is if there's no other way to decide who gets the lower number, you do it by alphabetical order. And if you're using O, M, and P, you don't need any other locators. And we're still labeling these in alphabetical order, C before E.